Scopulicola Goliath is a new addition to my collection. It is an absolute winner, as it grows extremely fat, much, much fatter than any of my San Pedro's, and it flowers like a champ. I got this plant together with Pacanoi Masia from a hippie community that is lost in nature somewhere in Spain. Like I explained in my video on Pacanoi Masia, I drove there with my buddy Suriel, who already knew the place, and we spent a great afternoon there. Really nice people and such a large collection of San Pedro's. I prefer not to show you images of the Scopulucola, except this photo with the background blacked out, as I don't want to publish anything that could lead to identify anyone who organizes ceremonies. As I was standing in front of that plant, I told the person in charge of the community that I would love to have a cutting of it. And I was very kindly offered to choose the piece that I wanted to have. Of course, I picked the one with the most flower buds. I counted no less than 27 flower buds on that large cutting that I brought home. And that is one of the key attributes of this plant. It flowers insanely. The only other plant I have access to that produces such a crazy amount of flowers is Pacanoi Colosso. Scopulicolas have been increasing in popularity in recent years. They look stunning with their sunken areoles, and they have absolutely zero spines, which is obviously a big plus for collectors who don't like spines. Another trait of the Scopulicolas is that they tend to have less ribs. It's not that rare for them to only have four ribs. Whenever you find a four rib Trichocereus, it's usually a scop. But it's not just for their beauty that they are sought after. People who consume psychedelic cacti value scopulicolas for their alleged higher potency. And maybe it's not just about strength. This particular strain of scopulicola has been used for ceremonies at the community, and the person in charge told us that its effect was also smoother than of San Pedro, Bolivian torch, or Peruvian torch. Of course, opinions are subjective, but it stands to reason that different species of Tucocerus can yield different experiences, and not just because of the varying amounts of mescaline. Trichocerus cacti also contain other alkaloids that can act as depressants or stimulants, therefore altering the experience. As a reminder, this channel is only about cultivating and collecting these plants. But occasionally, I will touch upon the psychedelic experience to provide context for a video. If anyone from law enforcement is watching, it does not mean that I consume these plants, nor do I suggest that anyone should. Unfortunately, the Goliath piece I brought home did not seem to like being cut in the middle of the growing season, and it started to etiolate shortly after, as it suddenly lost its supply of nutrients. For the same reason, it also looked as if none of the 27 birds were going to turn into flowers. They did not grow for many, many weeks, and many of them eventually dried up and fell off. Bummer. At that point, I kind of regretted not having brought back an even longer piece, especially since I was asked where I wanted the cut to be made on the plant. This cutting is over 5 feet long, so at the moment of cutting, I thought that there should be plenty enough to avoid etiolation. But I did not take the width into consideration. Goliath gets its name from its huge size. The piece I have is 5 inch wide. And since it's all about length to width ratio, I should have probably needed 8 feet of length to be sure to avoid etiolation. I had lost hopes for flowers this year, but in mid-October, when the seed harvest of my other cacti was finished, a few of the birds on Goliath finally started to turn into flowers. That was a very, very nice surprise. As you may be able to see, the birds had mealy bugs on them. Thankfully, the mealies are now gone, after applying alcohol on them a few times with cotton swabs. I believe isopropyl alcohol is what you want, but I used another type of alcohol and that worked just as fine. This plant also had some scale insects near the tip. I still have to remove those, but they are a lot less contagious than mealy bugs. To get rid of them, when there are only a few, I just wipe them off with a wet rag. And when I say wet, I mean with water, not alcohol. That is the issue with bringing adult cuttings to your collection. You don't just import the plants, but also the bugs that come with them. Well, having flowers is one thing, but they still need it to turn into fruits. And I didn't really see that happening in November or December with the cold weather. So what I did is move the plant to my living room. Like this, it could stay warm, still get plenty of sun through the bay windows, and hopefully, the flowers would turn into fruits. I have a bird loose in my living room for a good part of the day, so I had to improvise some sort of cover for the plant so that it doesn't land on it. Well, it all worked according to plan, and in the first week of December, the flowers successfully turned into fruits. The fruits had quite a thick skin. I don't mean the green outer part, but the white inner part of the skin, 
and it also had a weird texture to it. It seemed to melt like snow when you touched it with your finger. Now that the fruits were harvested, it was time to move the plant back outdoors. Because if I left it any longer inside my warm apartment, it might etiolate further. Up until night, I'd been in an air pot, which is ideal for the rooting phase. And now it begs to be repotted in a larger pot. As you can see in this video, the air pot helped the plant to grow plenty of roots. So now I will try to gently loosen them without breaking them. You don't have to separate them completely, just a bit is enough. This year I managed to cross Copulicola goliath with four strands of Pacanoi. You'll notice all these crosses are with goliath as the mum, which means that all of these four varieties will be mostly Scopulicola. Let's say two thirds Scopulicola, and the remaining third of the genetics will be Pacanoi. Since Goliath is such a fat Scopulicola, I've tried here to cross it with other fat plants from my collection, Sardaniola A1, Francis and Masia. As for Sardaniola A3, it's not a particularly fat Pacanoi. It's rather normal in width, but here I picked it due to the fact that it's pretty much spineless. So we've got a totally spineless plant, Scopulicola Goliath as the mum, therefore carrying most of the genetics, that is crossed with a Pacanoi, which is pretty much spineless. The babies you will get from this seeds should be totally spineless in my opinion. Just remember that even spineless cacti will have spines at the seedling stage, but those will completely disappear as the plants grow up. These four kinds of seeds are available now, as well as dozens of other interesting new varieties, so if you would like me to email you the full list, together with information and photos of the plant parents, please send me an email mentioning your country. My email address is in the description of this video, I will also make it appear on the screen now, it's sanpedromastery at protonmail.com. As you can see, Scopulicola goliath is a very special plant. When compared to the rest of my collection, there isn't a single San Pedro or Peruvian torch or Bolivian torch that comes close to it in terms of size. It's a really spectacular plant. I love it already and I can't wait to see it turn into a larger plant. I could have actually placed this cutting in a larger pot, but I'm a bit worried about the weight for my terrace. I really think I'm going to have to start looking for a house with a garden at some point in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon with more videos, so make sure you subscribe not to miss them. Ciao amigos.